I thought it was sad, uh, a little bit disconcerting. Uh, I think that those feuds have to end uh, in death, and I think it speaks to money and what it can do to a family if mm. things aren't handled well. Mm. Say it. Um, I echo that. Uh, let me add that... Mm, them not being a part of that ceremony on any level, grand level, outside of Shaquille O'Neal mentioning it, when Shaquille O'Neal also was saw, seen hugging Joe Bryant before the ceremony, without any other mention of them, is not by coincidence. It's all intentional. I, unfortunately, uh, lost my mother and a few other family members and had to be a part of the committee that is preparing uh, the goodbye and, and the funeral. Every single element is taken care of in line items and assigned. So for that to be the, the situation, only two things come to mind. Either one, Vanessa or whoever was a part of that committee, their purpose was to live out what Kobe was feeling at the time of his death. Can't blame her then. Or this is a situation where it was trying to repair itself and it needed to be fully repaired in depth because we're walking around all dying. And I think that the hard reset needs to be that you're gone. The building blocks of who Kobe was, I don't care who your wife is, who your kids are, is mama and daddy. And no matter what distance you guys are at, don't forget how all of this was able to grow from that base. Yeah, it's unfortunate, but I, we, can, we can back up a little bit just because of what's happened and transpired between his mother, father, and Kobe, and what happened, and the disconnect. I was at the game when he scored. It's the last game of 60, 60 points. After the game, he acknowledged the crowd, acknowledged everybody. Parents weren't there. Didn't, yeah. didn't, did not acknowledge, OK? His, his jersey retirement, it was the same situation. It was Vanessa's you know, family, his kids, but not his family. So this is not something that hasn't been done or seen. If you track it back, and the unfortunate situation is we don't know the ins and outs of why they couldn't reconcile, but through death, there's a certain closure, but then there's a certain pit that's still open because you weren't able to reconcile whatever those issues were yeah. during the time when somebody was alive. So I was there yesterday, and I saw his parents there, and they were, and I, I was kind of surprised, actually, because of what has transpired sure. in, you know, in the past. What I appreciated about the entire ceremony was that it was real and it was authentic. And everyone who spoke had a specific connection to Gianna and Kobe. And the truth is that his parents made him choose yeah. between them and Vanessa. And he made that choice. And he built a life around that choice. LeBron James didn't speak. Phil Jackson didn't speak. Gino Ariema spoke. Now, there are certain things about those relationships that aren't necessarily what are as advertised now, not as genuine maybe as they are portrayed. So that's what I appreciated, that he stuck to his, he and Vanessa stuck to their guns. This is the way it was when he went. We're not going to change it in hindsight just for appearances sake. Yeah, I wouldn't, and agree with what you're saying, I wouldn't have maybe had them speak but I just think in pictures, yeah. you're using the big screen. Mm -hmm. Co that part of Kobe's life from age zero to age 18, his dad was a big part of that. And I'm sure there was a way to recognize through photos of that. that but, his dad but, but the was only, part of that but who chose the photo? Yes. Who so put I, that to, you, you know right. what I mean? And that is the part that Rick is talking about in regards to, I think, where they wanted the family. And I, and I hate to try to speak for them, but it was viewed as... That's what it was. It's always been this way for the last, I don't know, 10 years, 15 years. Yeah. The family hasn't really been a part of it since he had to make that choice if that was given to him. So we're going to keep it status quo in that regard because all the stuff was there that was being shown was that, wasn't that family. Right. It was the other family. And, and, and honestly, it wasn't even Kobe's Laker family. If you look at all of the photos in the 24-page booklet that they gave out to everybody who, who went to the memorial. It's all pictures of either Kobe, Kobe in a Lakers uniform, or Kobe with Vanessa or his daughters. Some combination of that. 
You don't see anybody else featured in those photos and the photos that they were showing up on the screen during the memorial was only them. It wasn't, it didn't expand to a larger universe than that. And look, I'm not getting into a taste conversation about how they should have had his memorial, but a matter of fact conversation. Like there were stages and phases of Kobe's development and growth that I think you're supposed to celebrate all of it. You just don't wait to the parade. Who was there building the floats? Mama, daddy, before everybody jumped on the Kobe parade. So my thing is, I've noticed this in weddings, and we don't talk enough about it in funerals. Weddings have a honeymoon. Funerals have a fantasy phase where we recreate reality. And I've been there before when I've seen somebody in the casket. I'm like, that ain't him. Who, who, who y'all eulogizing ain't him. Right. Why y'all, it's glowing. And look, uh -huh. yeah. all I'm saying, if you're going to be authentic, yeah. that goes from beginning to end because we're celebrating the ending, which makes us think about the beginning and all of his life. Why didn't we go so far distant? Okay, it's a morning thought, and I haven't spoken on the Kobe Bryant situation and the memorial, not the funeral, the memorial. You gotta remember Kobe was actually buried at a funeral two weeks prior to the memorial. The mor memorial was actually set up by the Lakers in Genie Bus. And probably according to Kobe's wishes. And the biggest thing that I'm hearing, especially for him, black women is the snub of the parents, so-called, and how he's obligated as a grown person to be conciliatory towards, towards his parents, which as a parent, I would say that's wrong. One, since he died young, it's out of order because he's supposed to be burying his parents, not the other way around. And they keep talking about Kobe's family, Kobe's family as the parents. Kobe's family is not the parents. Kobe's family is his wife, his partner, and his offspring. That's his family. Now, Kobe was a part of his father's family. And when you get grown and you go off and you pick a partner, you make a family of your own. Now, do the parents become an extension of that family? Yes. Does the sisters become an extension of that family? Yes. But your significant other, the people that actually take responsibility for you and your children are not your parents. I have children. They have children. The primary responsibility of my grandson is not me. It's his mother and his father. There's sometimes that, that I've gone to his school events and I've gone to his plays and stuff like that. I've I've gone to them, but uh, lately I've not gone to them because I want to force his parents to do their job, which is they have primary responsibility of showing up at plays, showing up at, at events, showing up at school, school stuff, because that is their primary responsibility. That's the responsibility I had towards them when they were small because they were a part of my family. Those are my children. They're my primary responsibility. So having his mother and father at an event where they should get center stage is not necessarily true. Get that out of the way. Saying that they should be acknowledged for raising their child is they get that when, they, when the child is in life. When the child, uh, the fact that Kobe Bryant carry their legacy that's their reward, not not acknowledgement in his death. That's not their responsibility. That's not their prize. That's not that's honoring the parents in at a funeral. Okay, number one, America's not set up like that. Number two, they are not the matriarchs or the patriarchs of his family. That ends when he makes a new family. His wife and his children have primary responsibility of Kobe. Say Kobe had died. Kobe's wife wasn't around and he had adult children and Kobe had died. Then it's not the parents' responsibility to bury Kobe. It's his children's responsibility. Say if Jelly Bean died and they had a memorial service for him, Kobe's mother would be responsible for burying her husband and she would determine who gets to speak and who gets front and center stage. That's the order of things. 
Now, I was just watching a sports show. They're actually talking about Kobe and his parents and the appearance of things and how he was mentioned and what the parents' role was and who set it up. And I've I noticed the difference between how black people, black people that, that are part of this gynocracy see things versus white folks, which is which is interesting. I think I'll actually play the clip at the front of this of this video because it's quite interesting because the white men are patriarchal and the black people, black men are matriarchal and the black men believed that since Kobe's success was actually predicated on how he was raised and I wouldn't I would never question that because obviously how he was raised had a lot to do with his success. I would never question that one way or the other. That's obvious. But they thought that his parents were more important than his family. They should have, have actually had equal weight or a, a bigger role in his funeral, no matter what they did, right? That is the stance that we take as, as black people, and that is our cultural training, right? Very obvious. If you look at the if you look at what the white men said, I hate to compare white versus black, but the last white guy that spoke, he was saying that uh, his parents didn't want to be included in the in Kobe's family. They made Kobe choose, and since they made Kobe choose, they virtually disowned Kobe because of his choice, because of his choice in his wife, and they didn't try to get along with his wife. So a lot of events that Kobe was was at that that signifies his his role with the Lakers such as his last game where he scored 60 points his parents weren't there they didn't show up when they retired his jersey his parents weren't there and there's a lot of significant events where this his parents should have been there that they weren't when his helicopter crashed they never said anything his, his father, his mother, his sisters never opened their mouths. They never put out a statement. They, they, to, to my knowledge, they never put out a statement. They never said anything publicly. They never did anything obvious to where they acted like they were concerned. Now, did they show up to the funeral, his private funeral? Well, we don't know. And we're assuming that everything was good in Kobe's life. And one thing that, that the white guy did say the one guy that did say, this one thing that he did say, that that I agree with. I'm, I can't believe I'm agreeing with a white dude. Well, I can't say that. You know, I, I, I always say I belong to the truth. One thing that he did say that was true, if you weren't there the last 20 years, you basically disowned him, and you were basically at odds with him over the last 15, 20 years of his life. And you don't want to show up for his events and stuff like that. Don't pretend that you, this this loving, doting uh, family that was integrated to his life and you got snubbed at his funeral, at his death. I mean, they had them in the front row saying that they weren't a prominent as far as where they sat. You know, Shaq was sitting right next to them and Shaq was part of the, part of the event. And people in the background know who's, was close to Kobe and who wasn't. And like I said, nobody knows if if Joe and and uh, Kobe's uh, mother wanted to speak. Probably not. And the fact is that they were at odds with their son. And if you disown a child, you disown a child. If you make your child choose one person versus, an, versus another, then you basically separated yourself from that son. You did that. He didn't do that. Everybody's pointing at Kobe like he did something. Kobe's a grown ass man. He decided who he wanted to marry. He decided who he wanted to make a family with, and he has every right to do that. If the family has decided that they do not like the wife, that they don't like the wife, and they've been mean to this girl uh, since the time that Kobe started dating her, why in the hell would she want to respect or respect their wishes when Kobe dies? People are people, and human beings are human beings. And everybody's all up in their business like, like Kobe and Vanessa Bryant should have done something. Really what it is is that you don't like her because she's Latino. She's a Latina. And Kobe chose something outside of his quote unquote race. And you don't like his choice. And you made it very clear that you don't like his choice. And since he died, you're going to express your displeasure about how he handles his affairs. 
because it's public. And basically what it is, is that you don't like that black men have a right to do what they want to and how to proceed with their affairs the way that they see fit. And black women don't like losing control of black men because they think that what they say in their role in, the, in their sons or their children's lives is paramount. And the reason that is, is because of what you heard with those with the two black men, which two black men that I actually respect, you know, I like one more than the other, but two black men I actually respect. But the thing is, you can hear the training. You can actually hear the brainwashing, the cultural brainwashing that black men have, because they really weren't talking about the family. They weren't talking about the father. They were talking about the role of the mother and that you actually disrespected mama. And it always comes back to that in the black family. And the thing is, we don't want to admit that this is the case. I'm getting really sick of it, of black people and black women doing this. Admit it. Admit that this is not the order of things in the gynocracy. And really what it is, is not that you, the, the slight of the family, you know, because you know what it is. You don't like that he slighted his mother. And black women have a certain feeling about the mother of the matriarch in a matriarchal society that the black community is. That's why Kobe Bryant is a shining example that puts a spotlight on the gynocracy. Much the way uh, the OJ trial, the OJ Simpson trial, put a spotlight on the divide in the racial hierarchy back in 1994. It put a spotlight on it in the, in the racial divide, the the racist feelings came out during the OJ trial. And I think Kobe Bryant's death is gonna put a spotlight on the divide between black men and black women as far as the gynocracy is concerned. Because guess what? Black women will not let this go. They will not let this go. Kobe Bryant slighted black women all over the, all over the uh, put a spotlight on the hierarchy of the gynocracy all the way up to Susan Rice. And black women will not let this go. We're still talking about it. We're not even talking about Kobe Bryant's death, which is actually the most important thing. The funeral and the memorial is not important. The man's death is more important that we lost a great man. I don't care what you say about him. We lost a great man. And the fact that we lost a great man and we talked about him like he's a child is ridiculous. Who gives a fuck what his mother thought? Who gives a fuck what his family thought? Every, no, there's nobody perfect on this planet. There's nobody perfect as a human being, there's nobody perfect that has a family. There's always family rifts. Had Kobe been married to a black woman, nobody would have said nothing. No matter what the mother would have spoke or not. But since he wasn't married to a unapproved black woman and he's married to a Latina, everybody got something to say. Because what really black women want to prove by Kobe Bryant is the disloyalty and the non-submissiveness of black men that are supposed to be subordinate to them. And the thing is, everybody knows it, but nobody will admit it. It's the elephant in the room. Anyway, that's just a morning thought. I didn't want this to be too long. I'll put this up, and uh, I'll see you guys on the next one.